with the Happy Time Murders coming out, you mm-hmm. know, gross out Muppets. Yeah. The, the trailer showed one of the Muppets coming all over the place with Silly mm-hmm. String, mm-hmm. you know. People were excited for us to do this movie right here because sure. this movie is the naughty, dirty puppet movie. This is what everyone's always talking about because every 10 years or so, people want to see r- Muppets doing raunchy things. There was like Crank Yankers. Yeah. There was like Avenue Q was the thing that came There's out. There's a lot of parody videos like on YouTube, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And so for me, it's, you know, for me, this one at least was keeping to specifically Jim Henson's Muppet show. Yes, now, exactly. The thing was is that like you have the Muppet show and I know that they perform like a variety show and different yep. uh, acts and mm-hmm. singing and mm-hmm. all this type of stuff like that. But here's the thing. I didn't actually ever watch the Muppet show. Shame I never caught you. it. I didn't Shame catch it. Shame on you. I didn't you catch it. You saw... your goddamn bugs again, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> there were animals are close to bugs. Anyway, the thing was – I saw, I think the only Muppet branded thing I saw uh-huh. was Muppet Babies, the cartoon oh, when good. I was little. Muppet Babies so yeah, Muppet, but the thing is, I never actually got any real Muppets. Now, oh. we've had other puppets themselves, like mm-hmm. growing up, I had, I think they might have even been Jim Henson puppets. Yeah. Uh, I had, um, what was it, uh, Eureka's Castle, of course, Sesame Street growing up, uh, Lamb Chop. Uh, what was the other one? Dinosaurs was uh, one I watched a lot. Yeah. My cousin Skeeter. These are all puppets. <laughs> my pup. These puppet <laughs> right. shows yeah. that that we watched, and yeah. so. The Muppet Show, though itself, was not on my radar. It wasn't until I went to Disneyland, and yeah. they have a really great Muppet Live show mm-hmm. that cracked me the fuck up. Like it, it's hilarious. Like, oh, these are what the Muppets are. I thought they were going to be old and hacky. It's like, no, they're actually pretty clever in the way they go and they about. They stay relevant, yeah, and they, and they stay the relevant with what they're talking about. So yeah. when this movie is supposed to be a parody of that, I'm like, all right, you know what? I only have a general idea of what's going on and what's sure. what I'm to expect, especially since I knew nothing about this movie. So when they get to the parody point, when they start this movie off right, I was able to pick up pretty quickly the kind of entertainment they were trying to do. Meet the people, we're not your average, ordinary people, meet the people. Not as pretty as me, but they are the star. All right, you fat slag, move your ass. When are you gonna dump that hookery mall? Hookery mall, she may be, but she's also our major draw card. So, right away, you got wholesome family entertainment. Yeah, immediately to a seal, fucking a cat. No, it's it's it, it actually starts out great. It's like, oh, it's an opening musical number. Then you hear some like references, like the pussy and stuff. Right. Like, wait, wait, wait. What's happening? Yeah. But then you see all the debauchery behind the scenes. And at this, at the at this point, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm still with the film. It's this is hilarious. Again, middle right. school me loves this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because. In the Muppet Show, which you, of course you had not seen, right. they do the behind the scenes stuff, like what's happening, because Kermit is very much—he's the producer and, the, and right. the director of the show. You know, he's dealing with Miss Piggy, who is yeah, kind of the drama who's, queen, who's lusting after him. You know, who is who is certainly gluttonous and all that thing. It's like, oh, I see the similarities, and and Blanche is like the opposite of Kermit. You know, all that stuff. It's like, okay, this this is really really cool, but then it gets fucking weirder as it goes on. Right, and so like with that kind of set up, you have. Yeah. You know, that whole kind of frou-frou nice interaction. I mean, yeah, Miss Piggy's the wild card, but sure. everyone else kind of getting along with each other. Yeah, so it's yeah. Kind of, There's some dysfunction, but it's it's okay. Right. And so this one, it's like, you know what? No, nah, it, peels, it peels the curtain back on all that. This mm-hmm. shit is show business. This is yeah. messy stuff mm-hmm. right here that we got to go <laughs> going on. I will say that from this point on, though, we're going to have to jump back and forth yeah. from the movie because it just... What ends up happening is they go from different stories, different subplot, different subplot. It's barely a plot to begin with. So right. You can't even follow like the main plot in this film. It's right. hard. Yeah. Right. And so what I did was I put certain scenes in order together. Usually yeah. it's like, you know, A, A, B, C, C, A, B, and I'm just putting them together, that's you know. Fine. So that that's it's gonna it's gonna be out of order. Yeah. But it'll make sense mm-hmm. in the fluidity of the show. Exactly. So it's not that important to focus on that because you do have characters that you're supposed to care for like hell i'd even go with heidi the hippo i'd actually sure. like you know make her the main character because you know what she's out for a run during one of these uh, subplot <laughs> things and she comes back to the female cat from earlier that was getting slammed by the walrus mm-hmm. and yeah she was just, just adulterating all over the pa- place and 
she admits to the affair in front of her. It's like, you fat slob. I've been fucking him this entire time. Like, quite frankly, being catty. Even though yeah, she's literally. a cat, mm-hmm. she's being catty. And so this upsets Heidi. And so she gets all sad. And she's, like, stress eating. And she's reminiscing on her old, like, uh, uh, picture books or whatever. Yeah, but she was a jazz singer back in the day. Right. So. She was, you know, she was... You know, trying to to reminisce about when her and Bl- Blech? Blanche Blanche first met, and in a surprising turn, it gives actually some meaningful backstory mm-hmm. to a character that's like, oh yeah, she's just a diva, but it kind of acclimates you to like the origins of the Feebles, which wasn't always bad all the time. You a producer? I aim to be. I aim to be the best goddamn producer this town has ever seen. Heidi, I want to manage you. <laughs> like, they both had aspirations. They both yeah. had, like, this goal of being famous, and mm-hmm. he wanted to be a producer. She wanted to be a famous singer. And the thing was that her being super young and naive at the time, fucking yeah. 16 years old, you know, <laughs> and having been with him for so long, you can see the consequences of the abuse that she's taken mm-hmm. from him. So it's like, yeah, she's going to think that he's the only one to ever to ever love her because he brought her out of singing in, in, in smoke joints like that yeah. and, and making her a star and making her the pre- premier attraction of the Feebles. So, like, you can see, like, yeah – She's not just doing it because she's oh she's fat and she just wants to get money. She's not money chasing. No. She really loves him because he groomed her from such a young age, which is already creepy in its own right. He's already evil in that mm-hmm. regard. And so the thing was is that like you know, while she thinks that the producer is being faithful to her this whole entire time, you know, <laughs> Bletch is out here dealing drugs to his own cast and like I don't know what he's doing because he's on a golf course. You know, dealing drugs with other puppet animals. And I'm like, all right, you know what? (laughs) What is the subplot here for other than, oh, we're selling cocaine, you know? Because we already understand that Bletch is a bad guy, that the rat and the bulldog are bad guys. Mm -hmm. We understand that already, especially with that that flashback right there. I don't know why we need this whole subplot. Well, his whole thing is, 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 I'm just a criminal. I'm just trying to make money at this point, doing whatever the fuck I want. I'll, I'll uh, I'll do drug deals. I'll make smut movies. I'll, you know, have my cast in indebted to me for years and drugged out. I mean, he's, a, he's a manipulator, even back in the day when he was manipulating Heidi. Again, it's just to show just the sleaziness of uh, of Hollywood, of, of the filmmaking process and things like I that. I guess, but... The worst I, of the filmmaking. You know, right, kind of but thing. I, I, the thing about this movie is that mm-hmm. um, I read this, and it makes sense to me after the fact, yeah. which is this was supposed to be like a TV series or like a section in a TV series, and the producers apparently were Japanese, were like, you know what? Fuck that. Let's make it into a movie. And so they had to write a bunch of things really quickly wow, okay. to, to get it out. Weird. Yeah. That's why it's a little weird. That's why, and I think that that's one of the things that's there to pad it out because mm-hmm. it's just a basic drug story. It's like, oh, we're selling drugs. Yeah. Drugs are bad. We got to go have a conflict. Mm-hmm. And it's there because there's no care in it. And it's just kind of, it's not super crucial to the story. Other than there's another character who uses that it's drug. It's like, I mean, this, this this story takes place over the course of 12 hours. It's like a day in the life of like all these characters. Right. The moment. And so up until that point, though, this movie, there have been a lot of adult themes, adult language, yeah, yeah. and some walrus cat sex. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, but that's it was new. Yeah, yeah, that, at least. I didn't even know that was possible, <laughs> but that's how it works. But all right. You got that little bit of shock. Uh-huh. Out of you, Adam. Oh, they're having sex. Okay, whatever. But here's the thing. It's not that shocking to me. I you seen I, stuff like I, you saw you saw a walrus have its waves of penguin. You've seen oh, that I saw stuff? that clip. You saw yeah, that fucked up. shit, it's <laughs> fucked up. So yeah, um, I don't know. You know what? Because I, I don't you know. You gotta bring that up. Yeah, there I don't know. This is a video that has been making the rounds on Facebook, and it's kind of disturbing. No audio for you, audio listeners. It is oh. a um, penguin getting molested by a walrus, and oh. it's and the penguin sad, and God. the other penguins are just like. They're like, uh, like uh, we're hanging out. Bah, 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 bah. And, <laughs> they're into it, I think. Quite frankly, it. that's not even the clip that's been making its rounds. Well, that's that's a me. that's an entirely different clip oh, really? of that same thing happening. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I, I, the walrus doing that to somebody is gross. Mm-hmm. We know that's gross. It's, and that's okay, whatever. I've seen it in real life. Yeah, the yeah. unfortunate <laughs> part, I've seen it in real life. But with my you know, with my sense of shock kind of being worn down, whatever sure. have you, I'm like, all right, you know what? 
walrus cat sex, that's just the tip of the iceberg. It, it, because movie, yes. what we're going to do, <laughs> we're going to have two hardcore sex plots going on side yep. by side. Mm -hmm. And now for me, and I'm like, you know what? Uh, only one of them works for me, truly, honestly. Oh, okay. Only one. one of them really works for me got because it, got it. the other one, not so much. Now, I think we might be conflicting on this because you asked yeah. for a particular clip, um, but I know some of you might have had a weak tummy to seeing a penguin get actually raped by a walrus. Probably should have put a spoiler in front of there. <laughs> but if you don't want to see puppet sex, skip about two minutes. If you don't want to see puppet sex, if you yeah. want to see puppet sex, yeah. I'm not here to kink shame you. By all means, stick around. Just uh, be sure to it. lube. And I want to see it. <laughs> so, and so with that, you know what? I'm not going to king shame you. Fuck it. Mm -hmm. Let's watch the puppet sex. Let's do it. Oh, 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 Okay, Dennis, drop your strides. Oh, let's go. Come on, get aroused. A card. What's the matter, Harry? Huh? Not feeling huh? too well? What? Uh. Care to join me for lunch? <laughs> and hide the truth, Harry. Whatever it is you got, I'm gonna find out. Like, that whole sequence, man, is just filthy, man. So and, which one did you not like, man? All right, well, I'll get to that in a minute because I'm just like, all right, you know what? Mm -hmm. This is like, I'm going to pull the part that's just absolutely, like, this is supposed to be a gross-out movie. Yeah. Only one thing in this movie really grossed me out, and that's that fucking fly eating the shit from yeah. the spoon. That, that's a oh, scat in there. That, uh, <laughs> this shit is gross because the thing was, like, I get it's a gross-out film. Mm -hmm. and the bathroom itself is all gross and nasty. Like, I, I get it. It's supposed to be nasty, but... We get it. <laughs> like that. Like, he's like, oh, he's, oh my he's God. eating that rabbit shit. Oh, carrots are in here. Mm, right. I love it. And that being said, you know, a rabbit who has a lot of sex feeling sick, he fucks parties like a hard. Yes. He fucks like a rabbit, you know. <laughs> we'll get into that in just a few minutes because, mm -hmm. you know, that's fine. You know, in my head, he's partying hard. He's not feeling yeah. good. He's losing his shit. Living the life. He's sick on drugs, you know, whatever. That's it. The fly, who I get is supposed to be annoying. Mm -hmm. I, I fucking hated that fly every time they were on camera. Like I was just like annoyed. It was mm -hmm. like, um, who's the girl from Temple of Doom? Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh God, Kate Capshaw. Kate character? Capshaw. What's yeah, her character's yeah. name? Uh, Willie. 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 It's like Willie and them together, just like screaming and <laughs> yeah, okay. and fucking hated it. I mm -hmm. hated that shit. But then and. I'm going to pre-pun it. Uh, I never thought I'd have to utter these words. Oh, did you make a pun? But the <laughs> cow bondage porno flick scene was just another one of those things where I was just like, yep, you know what? They need to pad the time out. It's like, what's the most outrageous thing we can sure. do? Because they never come back to that, ever, hardly No, ever. they come back to it but with uh, well, Dennis to, the Aardvark. I get yeah, it. Dennis and the Aardvark. And those two scenes cross over because, you know, he's masturbating to uh, what Harry and his, uh, and his buddy uh, 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 Bunny Girls are doing. And he's like, well, he's going on a panty raid, and he got uh, Trevor uh, recruiting him for the film. That's the thing. You ever want to watch a, a puppet masturbate? There you go. Because we see... Yeah, well, and no, 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 it's it's actually it's just it's, no, it's coming from his mouth. But they, they say that is no, it's coming from his uh, nose, nose. Which, but they do say that that is his his cum. That oh. is his gist. The, G Jesus. Anyways, yep, there you go. And that's the thing. You know what? It it's like you know what? I get it. It's gross. But the thing is, like for me, you know, we give cartoons problems. We can get mad at cartoons for being gross for gross out sake. And sure. I think that's what for that part right there. Mm -hmm. Is gross for gross out's sake, you yeah. know, because I like it's like for me it's a low effort. It's like, well, what do we do? Oh, let's put them in a bondage thing. Let's have a bondage done. Let's make pornos. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, a cow and a cricket are making pornos. Okay, big deal. All right, yeah, it's then, all shock. That, it, that's it, what these two scenes are, are meant for. Right. Although, although right. Harry kind of continues on to something. Else. Right, really and important. and that's the thing. And and so like my thing is like, look, seeing being seeing people or characters or animals, whatever, yeah. being detestable is something that we've all seen nowadays is like the more common thing like watching detestable people be funny and, and having them their folly be their downfall yeah that we have sure, shows sure, like sure. that we have uh it's always sunny that's i hated mm -hmm. i hated it's always sunny it's really a, until oh, okay until my brother goes yeah you're not supposed to like them no they're, they're supposed scumbags. to be awful awful people mm -hmm. and then i started like watching it through that lens like <laughs> oh this is awesome yeah and like hell even just from a simpler way like breaking bad watching a bad guy be bad yep is fun, yeah. right? And so for the thing is that you don't have to do all this. You can do half the stuff and and make it a little more poignant, a little more sharp, and have a little bit better payoffs, and that's good. <laughs> now, right. 
when we talk about payoffs, I will say, however, there are other subplots that I actually do really like. Yeah. And I, and I do, and they do make a lot of sense in the context of like, yeah, this is a puppet movie. It's not supposed to be realistic, mm-hmm. but the motivations and the, and the awful things that are happening have a purpose. And that's what I like about what's coming up because, you know, you have these characters trying to represent like a realistic, like, uh, a production, right? Yeah. yeah, that's the whole point. It's like, oh yeah, people are doing coke and doing doing sex. They're doing the sex. Yeah, of course. They're having sex with each other. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. it's pretty raunchy behind the scenes. I get that, but then you have the crack frog, and he's, well, he's, he's on everything. Man. He's, he's, yeah, he's everything. <laughs> like he's probably my favorite character he's in great. the movie because. Mm-hmm. Quite simply, comedy junkies make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> like honestly, you got Tyrone Biggums, you yeah. have the the guy from uh, Don't Be Mad at Central City and Juice the Hood. I got these cheeseburgers, sure. okay. man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I like uh, fucking Oscar the Grouch. I like yeah, comedy yeah. junkies. He's they're they're hilarious to me because you know you have this frog. He's a meth addict. He's everything addict. He just wants to huff he shit. He needs everything. to get high. Yep. And he's also the knife thrower in the routine. <laughs> that, to me, is fucking hilarious. He's constantly fucking shaking the right. entire time. And so when you're watching it all together, it's like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. Mm. But, the, but the contrast of those two things is actually really funny. Trevor, please. Oh, I need it, man. Oh, that's all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Next. And then it just cuts just, away. Yeah, okay. That's what I fucking love about it is the fact that he like he's like oh, and then he just all right, fucking move on. And Murder then like later they call, woman. later they call back to her. It's like I don't think she's gonna make it. No. <laughs> it's like God damn it, man. And now there's pre- probably people out there like going like Sam, look, dude, like you talk about these other scenes like, Oh, they're just there for gross out sake. Oh, they're just raunchy for no reason. You know, this is just the same type of violence and crude humor that, that all these other parts of the scene are, you Mm -hmm. know, what's different from a, from a junkie knife thrower than a, uh, a cow pornographer, right? What's the difference, right? (laughs) It's just drug drugs. He's high. He can't do anything right. And you know what? I'd agree with you. I would agree with that argument. If there was nothing else that they did with this gag, if they didn't go on with this gag, because simply if he was just a drug addict the whole time, it's like, okay, he's just silly junkie and it'd be less funny. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, this movie just takes a, of a 30 minute, not a 30 minute movie, 90 minute movie. This movie takes a seven minute just (laughs) U-turn. To be like, hold on, we have something brilliant for you. We need, a backstory. We need you to give you this backstory for yeah. this frog because you know what? This frog has seen some shit, and there's a reason why he's a goddamn junkie. Have you got any smack? Smack? Horse, liquid sky. You haven't been to hell and back. <laughs> no. No, you've been to Vietnam. I saw the worst of it, kid. We thought the goose got you all. Come on, buddy, help me up. When you are, don't leave me, please. Uh, uh. Like amazing, the movie just stops. Yeah. They just give you a full war film. I want to see that puppet movie. Right? No, that <laughs> that movie is that's something that would be interesting mm-hmm. to see because that's the one thing I will say I do like about this. We'll talk about it a little bit later. But the squib effects in this movie oh, yeah. with the thing, yeah, they're good, they're fucking they're great, man. Up, yeah. And so, like, my thing is like, not only does that seem real. But it gives them a reason to be detestable. It gives them a reason. You like, understand why he you, is the way. You he is. understand the reason why he is the way he is, and it gives it a purpose to be like to have this crackhead on the cast. Like, why would you yeah. have a crackhead on the cast? It's like, oh, he's a vet. Okay, yeah. whatever. And, yeah, and, he, there you go. and he's a knife thrower. Mm-hmm. Probably a trick he learned in Saigon. There you go. But the thing is, like, you know what? He's racked with PTSD. He's high all the time. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why he's detestable. There's a reason why he's he's evil and he's nasty and he's gross. Yeah. I like that there's a reason because the thing is, like, you know what? Him being racked with PTSD, that's dark in itself. But the thing that also is really enjoyable about mm-hmm. that is that the sequence is wonderfully shot for such a stupid side game. Oh, sure. No, it's it it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. The thing is, like, it's supposed to be just like a, like a like a family guy cut where they do a cutaway. They cut away for seven <laughs> minutes yeah. to do this whole war film with with torture and, and people losing friends and blowing mm-hmm. up and stuff like that. And another thing to note about that is that when this movie was being made, the Beat the Feebles, yeah. uh, it was over budget, of course. <laughs> and the crew... 
funded that section of the movie themselves. Oh, really? Wow. They were like, okay. you know what? We awesome. we don't have enough money for this, so we're gonna put the money into making all this stuff. And you can tell that with that story, with mm. that little anecdote, like, yeah, they they did this for their own fun. You can tell that they had fun with it because yeah. it is so uh, lovingly crafted because you watch everything else it's dark it's 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 not lit well it's this, very this has rushed. lighting equipment in it this actually. has like <laughs> lights this has sets this has squibs and mm. and, and and explosions and yeah. stuff like that yeah and it's in my head is even funnier like they're all miniature sets that they had to mm-hmm. build so this is like a whole sequence where it's like yeah there's love and care put into this and i really like that and so i was like you know what i think that was the only part where the actual creators of the movie were like you know what this is a great idea. Fuck it. We got to put our own money into it. Fuck it. We'll do it. Like we have to do this thing. And, and the thing is, there's, it's, there's, there's just something funny about doing a parody of, of deer hunter, which I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. I've not seen that. That's, nope. We got to do that sometimes. Okay. It's one of the best war Vietnam films ever, but like they'll see like, they even have the, um, I don't know what they are. Aardvarks or whatever. Gophers. They're gophers. And it's like these super stereotype versions of the Viet, <laughs> Viet Cong. Yeah. It's like, you can't do that today. Yeah. Like, you can't have that. It's gross. Oh my God. They got big buck teeth. I mean, it could be rabbits. Yeah, and, and he calls them, what does he call them? Well, he calls them Char- Charlie. Charlie Gooks. Go- like, yeah, he calls them the, straight all, up. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry, uh, Crazy Rich Asians, your week's over. They call them Gooks. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's like the most racist thing ever, and I'm saying it not as a saying calling anybody that. No, that's what he says in the film. But it's what he says in the film, yeah, and I'm yeah. just like, oh my god, you can't call him that anymore. No, you no. can't. I mean, I get he's a war rat, and like I said, the detestable, they're the worst people. But man, there's just certain things you can't do anymore, and that's yeah. one of them, right? But those there. gophers do some nasty shit to them, so like, oh, well. true. Yeah, they just make him play Russian roulette. <laughs> yeah. So I can understand why he has a little bit of anger. Yeah, yeah, so. you get it. And, and but the thing is that you know, there's another joke though in this movie though that as it goes along, mm-hmm. I go with it more. Sure, and, you, know, it's you have to go with everything. You have, you have to go with it because the thing is, you know what. I, you know, they said we had a great idea there, and I think this subplot also had a great idea in context and in mm-hmm. theory as well. Because going back to the rabbit, the crazy sexed up rabbit, <laughs> he yeah. ends up collapsing behind the scenes due to his sickness that he's having. He's feeling ill, he doesn't know what's going on. And he goes to the doctor and he gets his checkup. And the news he gets is again, childish, yeah, yeah. stupid, ignorant. But in the context of the joke you're building mm-hmm. and the characters that you have, it's fucking brilliant, man. How are we feeling, Harry? Oh, yeah, I feel real bad, Doc. There's only one disease that fits these symptoms. <gasps> it's the big one, Harry. No, no, oh, it can't be true. It can't be. I've taken precautions. How long have I got? It's difficult to tell, but with a case as advanced as yours, ten, maybe twelve. Months? Uh-uh. Hours. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, Harry. Don't tell anyone. Let me do the show tonight. Okay, Harry. I want to go out with my reputation intact. He has AIDS. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he gets AIDS. <laughs> or really, oh well, yeah, I guess AIDS. STD. AIDS. <laughs> yeah, it's so yeah. bad. And the thing is, the worst part about it is that it's just in the middle of the AIDS epidemic. This is 1989. Yeah, they don't give a this shit. This is at the peak of it, <laughs> right? And, this, AIDS. and the thing is that this, this rabbit is having sex orgies like Will Chamberlain. Oh, yeah. He's, and he's, and he's doing all sorts of bad things. And he legit gets a disease that's one, real, and two, for some reason, will kill him in 24 hours. Yeah. Like He's got like super AIDS. Super and I'm AIDS. like, that is fucking childish. Mm-hmm. That, it, to me, though, is funny, not because it's super AIDS, not because it's a horrible disease, but it's because it's consequences to what he's been doing this whole time, to what his character's established. Yeah. He's fucking around, he's a big old perv, he's parting too hard, and he gets AIDS, and he's going to die in a day. That to me, that if you're gonna go that level of debauchery, mm-hmm. have the payoff be de- debaucherous as well. Have but, it be that bad. Plus, it's how they're selling the scene too of like Doctor Crack over there. Like you know, it, it's it's the setup. It's it's the long game. They're playing of the joke until they finally get to that moment. That's why it works. Right, yeah. and and so like, and that goes on. And that that's one of the grosser parts of the movie. Oh, like yeah, I said, yeah. We'll talk about it. We're, we're getting all <laughs> he there. Does a lot of, stuff is coming out of him. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's, <laughs> it's awful. And and so then you have the, the movie continuing. They're practicing their acts. Um, there's a stereotype of an Indian guy who's a super elastic, like a Dallasome character, and he sticks his head up his ass. Yeah. That's pretty bad in its own right. But you know what? This movie is not pulling any punches. No. It doesn't care to. It doesn't Make fun want. of everyone, every, uh, everybody's culture. Right. I think it's that time, Chris. 
You just comments. Oh, it's YouTube comments time. Welcome, YouTube. Thank you for watching last week's episode, which was Big Trouble in Little China. And thank you for watching this week's episode, which is Meet the Feebles. And if you're going to do all the stuff I'm going to tell you to do, start with leaving a comment, leaving 17 comments, hit the like button, hit it again, hit it a third time, triple like, do it. Then be sure to go to DTMerch.com. It's right there, DTMerch.com. Get yourself something nice. And it's gone. Mm. And then go to Party DT and all that other stuff. There's uh, there's a party going on in October. Come on down. Yeah. Come do that stuff. Sounds good. Yep. But we're going to get right into it. First up, we have Herzim. And this is regarding Big Trouble in Little China. Okay. The reason nobody gives Big Trouble in Little China any gruff over the white man as the savior is because one simple fact. It's not about the white guy as a savior. It is the white man as a clueless and completely incompetent sidekick who is never, who is in over his head and totally lost, if not for the Asians around him filling in all the time. It's just told from the sidekick point of view, and the sidekick just happens to be white. I don't think we made any arguments against that. I think it was just took me a while to understand that that's yeah. what it was. But I think, I think is, you initially started out like, oh, this is this is like the, the white savior right. movie. But then towards the end, you were right. saying that. No, this, he's, this is Exactly. Bad. We brought so, that up in the beginning, too. I hope you watched the end of the review. I hope you didn't get 10 minutes into it, me not knowing what was the point of the movie, and then sawing, sawing, seeing See. the fact that, oh, yeah, that is the case. I agree with you. Yeah. That's the Agreed. point. Mm -hmm. There we are. Thank you for pointing that out. Raymond Frand. This movie gave us Raiden of Mortal Kombat thanks to Ed Boon. So sure. Ed Boon was the developer. I think it was a Midway at the time that did that. Uh, yeah, now he has NetherRealm Studios who he does mm. the Injustice games and Mortal Kombat games. But yeah, I think I think it was Midway originally with Mortal Kombat. So there you go. It was definitely apparently like Johnny Cage was supposed to be um, what's oh, his name's Jack character? Burton? Jack was Burton, yeah. Oh, that's funny. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean I well, there's that. like different combos of people. Somebody in the comments said that. I, I mean, just a personality. I, I can totally see it now. But there's cool. a lot of influence of that movie in Mortal Kombat, not just Raiden, sure. but other ones. The look so. of it and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so, Very cool. I never played Mortal Kombat. As oh, we really? established. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've, oh, wow. I've played it since, but yeah. I never owned it. Let's put it that way. Okay, okay. So, next up, we have Roman Lopez. Kurt Russell and John Carpenter are great collaborators. Made some good ones, like The Thing, Big Trouble, and First Escape. Mm -hmm. I've heard, I've seen The Thing, I've seen Big Trouble, First Escape. Escape What's that from one? New York. He's oh, saying. the first. Oh, the escape first film. Escape from New York yeah. is Escape from LA. Don't, don't, say, don't see that movie. <laughs> Wait, why not? Because it's, it's terrible. But it's LA. I've been to LA. You don't want to see that. <laughs> but what if I do? We'll, we'll do it, but we gotta see Escape from New York first. All right, we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Random Battle XP. You were not put on this earth to get it, Sammy. <laughs> if there's any time you're going to assault reference. me from a movie, go ahead and do it. And that's actually the one right there. Because mm -hmm. I think I said that at one point in the movie. I was like, yeah. I don't get what's going on. And he's like, it's not for you to get. <laughs> Good zinger. I like that one yeah. right there. Next up, we have The Remy X Factor. Sammy's motto, never use five words when 500 <laughs> will do. Anyhow, thanks for covering this movie. They don't make them like this anymore. That they True. don't. And you know what? You're absolutely right. I think, are you my are you my my father or mother? Because they say the same thing about me. Oh, really? Using 500 words when five will do. <laughs> That's <laughs> very fine. wordy. It, it's just something I do. <laughs> Last but not least, Shamarlo Scott. Mm -hmm. Big Trouble in Little China was a good movie. Yeah. Yes, it was. And on that note, I just want to end it there. <laughs> no, because positive. that is a good note to end on. So... Thank you for watching this week's episode. Next week's episode, I have no idea what it is. Yeah. But go ahead and leave those comments. Hit the like button. Subscribe to Double Toast. Let's get it to a billion subscribers. And we're out of here, Chris. Say goodbye to the YouTubes. Bye, YouTubes. Oh, goodbye to the YouTubes. Everybody's gone. Bye.